I welcome all my students to the second class on kinematics of rigid bodies. Today we will solve one more problem, fundamental problem 17.2 to consolidate our concepts on the two equations of kinematics. One is the force equation. Summation of all the forces acting on the rigid body is equal to the product of mass and acceleration of the body. And the number two equation is that summation of all the moments about the center of gravity for a rigid body in planar motion is equal to zero. These two equations will be using. The problem that we have in hand today is, is problem 17.2. It says if the 80 kg cabinet is allowed to roll down the inclined plane, determine the acceleration of the cabinet, and the normal reactions on the pair of rollers A and B that have negligible mass. So as far as the question is concerned, the question says that we are having a cabinet. Okay, cabinet is like a wardrobe in which um, things are stored. Okay, you keep utensils or we keep uh, what we call as uh, uh, clothes. That's called a cabinet. Okay, so we are having a cop cabinet. Sometimes in the cabinet, we also keep the documents. Okay, the mass of the cabinet is 80 kg. Fine. And this cabinet is lying on a roller. Okay, there is a roller. Okay, a roller board. Okay. Uh, and on this roller, where we have placed this cabinet, and this cabinet is rolling down the inclined plane, having the angle of inclination 15 degree. Okay. We have to find at with which acceleration. What is the value of the acceleration uh, that will be uh, by which this cabinet will be coming down this inclined plane? So first of all, we have to find the acceleration of the cabinet, number one. Number two, we have to find the normal reactions on the pair of rollers A and B. How much is the normal reaction offered by the point of contact B and the point of contact A, okay? Whenever there is a contact between the two bodies, there is always the creation of the normal reaction, okay? We have to find those normal reactions. Before we solve this problem, the first and foremost thing is, we have to set up our coordinate system. I will give you a, a, an easiest way of an easiest way of solving the questions in which a rigid body is coming down or going up an inclined plane. Okay, what you will always do, what you will always do is the x-axis and y-axis is to be selected in such a way. The x-axis and y-axis is to be selected in such a way that what total analysis of the rigid body becomes easy for you, okay? So what I will do, if the body is coming down the inclined plane, I will select my x-axis in this direction. I will say, let this to be my x-axis. I will call this to be my x-axis. This is our x-axis. And as far as the y-axis is concerned, y-axis is the axis which is perpendicular to the x-axis so i have to treat this to be my y-axis okay by doing this the analysis of this rigid body becomes easier okay you can treat this to be your x-axis you can treat this to be your y-axis okay then if we are treating this to be our x-axis this to be our y-axis then the analysis of this rigid body requires many equations to solve okay in order to get rid of all those equations what we will do this you will remember always that the direction of motion is to be taken as the x-axis and an axis perpendicular to the x-axis will be treated as y-axis. After doing this much, draw the free body diagram. Okay, the free body diagram will be, as far as the g is concerned, the mass is 80 kg. There will be the gravitational weight of this rigid body, which will be going downwards. Okay, perpendicular, which will be downwards. This is the gravitational weight of this rigid body and the magnitude of this weight will be uh, this uh, it will be 80 kg this is mass multiplied by 9.81 newton okay so 80 multiplied by 9.81 newton is the weight of this cabinet going downwards and that comes out equal to that is equal to 784.8 so that is 784 0.8 newton 784.8 newton okay this much of the weight will be acting downwards number one apart from this there will be the normal reactions that we have to calculate 
now normal reaction at point b normal reactions are per always perpendicular to the surface okay interface normal reactions are always perpendicular to the interface okay so the interface is our plane is like this along x axis so along y axis will be having one normal reaction and the another normal reaction at point a will be in this direction this will be the reaction at a okay and we'll call this as this is a reaction at a we'll call this as normal reaction at a and this we'll call as normal reaction at b okay fine now in order to make the analysis very easy we have been given that the angle of inclination of the plane is 50 degree 15 degree so what i will do i will draw an x axis and we'll draw an axis like this let's take an axis let's draw an axis here like this this is fine and one more axis we'll draw through the center of gravity through this okay now why i'm drawing these axes to make the analysis very very easy for us as far as this angle is concerned this is 15 degree angle therefore this angle too has to be 15 degree the reason for this is very simple the reason for this is this line and this line are parallel to each other okay and with respect to a horizontal it describes an angle of 15 degree therefore with respect to the horizontal it will also describe an angle of 15 degree fine now uh, what else angles i have um, therefore i can say this angle plus this angle is 19 degree 90 that is this total angle is 90 degree angle okay if this is 50 15 degree angle then this will be 90 minus 15 okay and that comes out equal 90 minus 15 will be equal 75 okay therefore this much of the angle is equal 75 degree angle. okay this angle is 75 degree fine after this uh, if i look at the rest of the angles that have been drawn here we can easily say that this angle and this angle they are vertically opposite angles these angles are vertically opposite angles okay and as far as this angle is concerned this angle is concerned since this entire angles are this uh, this angle is 90 degree here okay this angle is 90 degree here fine as far as this angle is concerned now we have to find actually this angle okay i need to find out this angle so that i can resolve this mg into its two components okay so i'm looking forward for finding this angle okay in order to find this angle what i will be doing using some if we look at the total angle let me draw it cleanly so if you look at this angle that this gravitational weight red line will be subtending with this okay i will i need to make a little correction here i need to make a little correction here okay i will redraw my horizontal this horizontal i will redraw redraw as far as this angle is concerned this total angle will be 90 degree okay because this is the gravitational weight it will it's always perpendicular to the horizontal surface therefore this angle is 90 since we are given mm, this angle is 90 this this total angle is this angle is uh, this angle is also this angle is also 90 this angle is also 90 this angle is also 90 therefore this much of the angle will be 75 okay this angle will be 75 degree but this angle is 90 degree that is this much of the angle is 90 degree when this is 75 therefore this angle will be 15 degree okay therefore i can write it by these trigonometric values by little geometrical values i can write that this angle is my 15 degree angle okay so this is now 15 I will write here this angle as I will write it here. This angle is equal to 15 degree. I will write it here. Okay, this is 15 degree angle. Okay. Now, as far as this mg is concerned, I will be resolving this mg into two components. I have drawn this horizontal line. Okay, to find this angle, 15 degree. Okay, but because I know this red line will be perpendicular to this uh, black line. Okay, thick black line. This angle is this angle is 90 degree. I know this. But at the same time, this angle is also equal to 90 degree. Okay. When this is 15, therefore, this much of the angle will be 75 degree. Now, since this angle is 90, this much is 75. Therefore, this will be 15 degree. 
okay that's why i have drawn this horizontal line now let me resolve this mg as i am going to resolve this mg into its components the components of mg will be the first and foremost component of mg will be in this direction okay that is we'll be calling that as we'll be calling this component as mg that is 784 784.8 newton and it is in the direction of this angle is 15 it will be cos of 15 degree this is cos of 15 degree this angle and it's another component will be and the another component will be in this direction that component will be calling as that component will be 784 784.8 newton multiplied by sine of 15 degree okay so this is sine of 15 degree fine this is another component okay there is no other component acting on it so if we look at the cart which is now rolling we can easily say that the cart is rolling down there is no external force acting on the cart except this component of the gravitational force okay therefore we will write summation of all the forces along x-axis we'll write the only force that's acting along x-axis is the only force that's acting along x-axis is 784 that is 784.8 sine of 15 degree this is the force has to be equaled by newton's law product of mass the mass of this cart is 80 kg multiplied by the acceleration of the cart or the acceleration of its center of mass that we have to calculate we don't know the value of this acceleration okay that will be a so as far as the value of a comes out equal therefore the value of a will be the value of a will be 784.8 sine 50 divided by 80 meter per second square that is equal so i will do it sine of 15 degree is 0.2588 multiplied by 784.8 divided by 80 comes out equal 2.539 that is 2.54 the value of the acceleration comes out equal 2.54 meter per second square okay so this is the value of the acceleration so you, if you calculate the acceleration the value of the acceleration of this cart is the value of the acceleration of the cart is 254 meter per second square okay so which equation we have used we have used summation of the resultant of all the forces acting along x-axis or acting along any axis is equal to the product of mass and the component of acceleration along that direction okay we have used this equation okay now we have to find the acceleration we have calculated the acceleration the second thing that we have to find the normal reactions okay n a and n b in order to find the normal reactions i have we have been saying that in planar motion the summation of all the moments about the center of gravity is always equal to zero okay now i will take the moments of all the forces about the center of gravity so as far as the moments are concerned the first and foremost moment about this center of gravity uh, will be because of this n a and n b fine okay take the moment so i will write this as summing up all the moments it will be n a multiplied by 0 0.5 okay n a multiplied by 0 0.5 i'm taking it negative because its tendency is to rotate the cart in the clockwise direction and the other moment will be because of n b and the tendency of n b is to rotate the cart in the clockwise direction okay anti-clockwise direction so i will write it as plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 multiplied by multiplied by nb okay and the moment because of the gravitational weight about point g will be equal to zero okay because there is no perpendicular distance the line of action of the force is intersecting with the axis about which we are taking the moments okay therefore the moment of this gravitational force about this g will be equal to zero since summation of all the moments about center of gravity is zero therefore this is equal to zero from this equation we will get n a becomes equal to n b that is reaction at a is equal to the reaction at b this is what we are getting from the equation from mg okay that's fine now what we will do write down the since there is no motion along y axis sum up all the forces along y axis okay so when we sum up all the force along y axis we are having n a along y axis i will write n a it is acting along positive y axis plus nb is also along positive y axis i will write this as plus nb and look at this uh, 784 cos 15 okay this is acting along negative y axis okay i will write this as minus 784 
0.8 cos 15 has to be equal product of mass and acceleration along y-axis since there is no motion along y-axis therefore this has to be equal zero fine but from this equation na is equal to nb therefore i can write this as twice na becomes equal to 784 multiplied by cos 15 multiplied by 784.8 that is equal 758.05 okay that is 758.05 and the units will be newton okay therefore na comes out equal to 758.05 divided by 2 that is 379 that is 379 379.02 or you can write this as 300.79 therefore how much is the reaction at wheel a that is 379 since n a is equal to n b therefore n b will also be equal therefore the value of n b will also be equal same so we have completed this question we have completed this question but look i'm again exaggerating to you i'm trying to know you know introduce to you that why we are writing the summation of moment equation why we are writing the summation of moments okay and why we are writing this f of x because as the as, as far as the uh, cabinet is concerned the cabinet is having rotational motion as well as the trans the planar motion okay so as far as the force equations are concerned the force equation will be the linear force equation and the rotational motion equation therefore using these two equations we can find the acceleration of the cart as well as we could obtain the reactions how much is the reaction offered by the cabinet at point a as well as at point b this is how students have to solve rest of the questions Thank you very much.